to my channel. Today I am going to review Cruella, which I recently saw in theatres. Now this is going to be mostly a non-spoiler review, but I will spoil a couple of things at the end, but I'll give you some warning. I think people are going to be very surprised at how good this movie is. It has been underestimated, and I am here to tell you it is worth the watch. This movie is completely different to all the other live action remakes so far. It doesn't cover any of the events of 101 Dalmatians and is completely original. It is like Maleficent but even more divorced from the source material. I think that the people who complain about the live action remakes could potentially really like this one. Overall, the film gives off major The Devil Wears Prada vibes as it is set in the world of high fashion. Seriously, when I was watching the movie I was constantly thinking about the costumes, they were gorgeous. Emma Thompson's character, the Baroness, reminded me a lot of Meryl Streep's character in The Devil Wears Prada, with some amazing dialogue while she is torturing her poor staff. But don't worry, it is not a rip-off of The Devil Wears Prada getting darker towards the end and the story going off in a different direction. The two leads of Emma Stone and Emma Thompson are incredibly talented. Emma Stone's Cruella is not completely good, she is still bad and mean, but deleting her desire to murder puppies really helps the audience to be able to root for her. In fact, Cruella actually has a dog of her own, Buddy, who is incredibly cute. Stone is obviously an incredible actress and was able to create an interesting complex character which made the movie incredibly engaging. Emma Thompson was hilarious as the Baroness and I was constantly laughing whenever she was on screen. The fact that we can feel sympathy for Cruella is because the Baroness is such an awful human being. I honestly didn't expect her to be as evil as she was. Horace and Jasper are a lot more interesting than their animated version. There is actually some romance between Jasper and Cruella which is a really nice touch. It also makes you understand why he is doing Cruella's bidding. He was also probably one of the nicest characters in the film and you really wanted him to convince Cruella to be good. I felt really bad for the guy because he is clearly in a toxic relationship. In contrast, Horace provides a lot of the comedy in the film, particularly through his interactions with his dog Winx, who is just so adorable. Even though overall I love this movie, I do have two criticisms. Firstly, the movie was too long, it's over two hours and it should have been about a half hour shorter. I actually thought the movie was ending significantly before it actually did. Secondly, they never fully explain Cruella's hair. In the first five minutes of the film, we find out that Cruella was born with black and white hair, but we're never told why. None of her parents have that hair, so it's really confusing and I wish they gave us an explanation. Also, I just want to warn you guys, this movie is very dark and I wouldn't recommend it for young kids. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the end credits scene and there will be spoilers, so leave now if you haven't seen the movie. Towards the end of the film, Horace comments that one of the Dalmatians looks heavier, aka pregnant, and then we find out Cruella has gifted both Anita and Roger a Dalmatian puppy. What does this mean? Honestly, this scene made me really, really need a sequel. Cruella doesn't follow a lot of the events of 101 Dalmatians, so I'd really like another movie covering that timeline. Also, Kirby Howe Baptiste is really talented, and I would love to see her version of Anita some more. Overall, I've decided to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. A great film, only let down by some pacing. Anyway, let me know what you think of Cruella. Like this video if you liked it, and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now, and have a magical day!